Welcome to the second day. Uh, I have some announcement. I will be doing this Into the Cave uh, course, and that one will start, will start on Monday, and that will be the part two. Uh, the organization will be exactly the same, signing the same, so it shouldn't be a problem. I will uh, send an email about that. The only uh, question to all of you is that at the end of this uh, series, um, you can ask me if you want another series or you want to uh, wait for a week and, and start another series because it's a series really about um, mostly how to become and improve yourself throughout time and how to use philosophy, how to use arts, how to use psychology, how to use anything in order to get better. So that's this course is about hard choices, easy life, and recognize them. So we'll, when we go deeper into it, yeah, it will be easier to see the hard choices in action and also to see hard choices in your own life. So you can recognize easy choice and you will be able to make conscious choices to uh, to have the you know, the hard choice and to improve because of that. So uh, wait for the email. I will send it and also let me know um, what you think about uh, one week into the Cape and one week hard choices, or um, wait with the hard choices uh, for longer. Just talk to me. So I I want to I want it to be this course. Uh, the course of uh, the goodness, the course of uh, uh, liking each other. Yeah, so yeah, I want you to start maybe talking to each other and then and, uh, and be kind. So um, what I'm asking is community that is a uh, uh, caring community, and that um, is another virtue that uh, we have opportunity to um, to learn or to even deepen. So uh, let's go to the day one. Day one, uh, it was a very intense day. I introduced a lot of things like self-control. I introduced uh, virtue, use the hard choices, liquid gratification. So a lot of, uh, um, a lot of, a lot of information uh, was uh, passed on, so it, it was. Uh, it's still probably difficult to capture the um, the idea of self control and uh, virtues as a representation of every human being at every time, and uh, the happy body as a core uh, opportunity to improve uh, those uh, two because of it, because of the engagement. I engage the first uh, two uh, to let you know, to bring you closer to uh, awareness and uh, about this, uh, this um, issues of, uh, you know, virtues and self-control and being that way. I talk about Groundhog Day and uh, to visualize, to uh, help you to feel and to see uh, the same thing in your life. That might be the same thing you can do um, to yourself, that you capture yourself actually uh, doing something, uh, what happened in Groundhog Day. So there is a, a definitely a transformation of a character and and, and very um, wide uh, scope of that change from the character that doesn't care to the character that cares for from the character that uh, that uh, would take advantage of the other human being to the one that cares for everyone from one that uh, is bullied to the one that is kind. So uh, that shift happened because of the 
of the integrity that is presented. And that integrity is the woman that uh, is in the movie. And in order to, to really uh, get uh, or match that integrity, the person has to go through changes. And uh, those changes um, happen throughout the movie. And there's very interesting uh, also um, a message that goodness is inconvenient, that uh, it um, stresses us and uh, asks us for um, uh, becoming a uh, you know, better person, but at the same time, it's easy not to. And when we are set in a way, it's very difficult for us to, um, to become the opposite of it. So there is a situation in a restaurant where, you know, he, uh, they, they talk and then, and she talks about that she studied French poetry and he laughs and says, uh, oh, what a waste of time. And he catches himself that he did something uh, wrong, right? And then next day, well, he is a friend. He knows about French poets, and then so on, so on. So, and that is the situation here. That uh, the subtle uh, situation that we are built of this believing systems too, that we make this assumption about something, and this and many times that this was assumption are you know really painful to others and, and put people down and and we use them uh, because it's uh, uh, it's fun it's kind of uh, uh, been um, entertaining and, and and fun so we don't see it as a, as a, a big problem in in life that actually shows us from a not a good perspective. So I would like to, um, so eventually we see that this person, you know, goes through changes and uh, ends up that he matches that integrity. And of course it takes years to match it, but he ends up to be with a beautiful woman and in, in, with integrity and kindness and goodness and you could see at the end of the movie that they have a wonderful uh, future in front of them. And it happened because of that journey of that uh, person toward this virtuous life. Well, you know, um, why this uh, stoic idea is so elusive and, and hard to grasp? Because, be, because the, that whole thing about virtues and goodness and, and self-control, maybe virtues and goodness, is not convenient. And we pick it, we don't want it, we you know, uh, reject it. And would rather uh, to be sarcastic in life, uh, we'd rather to complain, we'd rather to blame others and live in this, uh, um, this dark energy and negative energy. And because of that, uh, of course, it's uh, a lot of easier uh, to, to go ahead in life and put people down and so on, but, but we cannot end up with um, high quality people. That's why uh, I wrote that you cannot, uh, you cannot, uh, let me see. This person. You cannot buy good people. That the people that you have around, uh, the people that you are, you, we always match. So the first thing would be to watch what kind of people are around you and uh, and start exploring the the possibility to uh, to increase your, uh, your goodness. You know, the Stoics, uh, there is a, such a thing as a Stoic perfect, kind of a Stoic uh, 
like Jesus or, or you know, Buddha, you know, some kind of uh, 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 energy that uh, is an ultimate good. And that uh, ultimate good is there and we all go through life and uh, we either, you know, uh, have this progress toward that or we don't have it at all. We just waste our time on the Groundhog Day to get stuck in the same day without any messages and ideas and, and you know, doing something in the present moment that actually would help us to uh, become better over time. That's why, you know, in the happy body, I constantly address that issue of uh, becoming better over time and how we actually uh, create that. And in this, uh, the course into the cave, I will be talking a lot about that. So um, I would like to hear your, um, your insights uh, and your, um, your comments or whatever you want to say about uh, Groundhog Day, watching the movie and, and all what happened uh, the last day and then what is it that uh, you, um, you would like to share? Anybody? I'm reluctant to begin, Jersey, because I began yesterday, but... <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I don't want to be uh, greedy or waste anyone else's time. But um, I did all the assignments. I thought they were incredibly centering, um, especially... Well, they all had different, different reasons for centering, um, but I'll just talk about values so somebody else can talk. Um, for me, the values... Uh, exercise writing down what we value was really um, really eye-opening to me because just as you were describing a man who who was uh, not a good man and and couldn't attract a good woman until he became a good man and who put down his sarcasm and put down his um, belittling of others I, I found when I was writing about my values that these were things that were uh, like gold. You know, they, they are very, very <laughs> valuable. Right? Yeah. And, and that I need to honor these things in every day and in every in, in person I engage with and, and in myself. So thank you for um, asking us to reflect on what we really value. It was really cool. All right, welcome. Great, thank you. Here. Okay. Jersey, one of the things that I was thinking about when you were talking yesterday was that balance is one of my core values. And uh, I work with a school that tries to have uh, character and um, uh, values as the reasons that we run the school. And balance is something that we tried to put into our mission statement because it's so important in life. And I feel like a lot of what you're talking about with uh, hard choices, easy life, is really a lot about balance. You, know, you work hard, play hard. You, um, I wrote down that uh, if you put a lot of weight on certain priorities, you have to give a lot of weight to the actions that you take to make those priorities happen and it all has to balance out. So you have to expect to put in the effort if you want to get out something good. Right, so yes, of course, the, the balance is very interesting word because uh, um, you know, I see this balance between the self-control and engagement of the physical and the virtues and uh, the balance between these two um, you know, entities and you can see how um, the hard choice is presented, or easy choice, in Groundhog Day was of course presented with, uh, um, with, you know, becoming a better person, right? It was a hard choice, but easy was, you know, to outsmart everyone. And we have a lot of people around, right? They want to outsmart us. So it is, you know, important to start, you know, um, 
seeing that consciously so you can see people around that really they want to simply outsmart you and then uh, that is just the easy choice of a person um, to um, to play this uh, um, possibility for that person to shine in the in the uh, community and sometimes you know they shine and we is really hard to um, to uproot them to remove them from you know the community or you know give them the signs that something is off you know the person should get the signs uh, uh, messages to correct uh, himself or herself but we don't give the messages and because we don't give the messages these people thrive in the in the world and also get lost because uh, you know it's not really fun to be that person and eventually that person crushes in life and then and, and that therefore you know we are all in the world and we are all should create this possibility for others to get better and so we, if the people are uh, like that we should tell them give them messages hey uh, what you said is wrong or what you did was not right you know and on and on and on so this correction uh, uh, of standards uh, have to be on daily basis between people and they are there but you know uh, I, I think that maybe we need to have them more uh, so uh, that the balance is restored you know it's like uh, when you think about bullies right so um, uh, we don't have really a system uh, in uh, schools or everywhere else that would help the bullies not to be bullies, first of all. Tell every bully, whenever the bullies, that they, whenever the situation happens, tell the one that that's what happens, right? But we don't have uh, that system. We have avoidance system. We, we don't want to... Um, we don't know how to deal with it, really. We don't know how to simply, uh, you know, address this issues. Uh, so uh, we are still growing, you know, growing up as a society that is not transparent. It's really difficult for us to create transparency and, and develop this transparency. And here is, um, uh, here is the happy body too, right? And complete transparency when it comes to standards and and uh, pursue yourself on that journey and improve those standards over the you know, course of your life. And, uh, and that's how it's supposed to be, but it's a really hard choice. But that hard choice comes you know, to the end with greatness, with integrity, with goodness. But that choice um, needs time and needs delay gratification, needs patience. And then when, when it's given, so we, we somehow also need to develop because if we don't have it, we can easily miss it. So we have to talk and more and more about that possibility. Yes, definitely schools and definitely schools and, and, and balance and, and you know, we, we have to really work on schools because that's where, that's where our new people that's the people that they are coming in how they are coming in right you know are they coming with the same experiences of being bullied and, and stressed and put down right or even you know experience to put somebody down it's not a good experience either it's nobody really uh, benefits from it so it's just you know but when a virtue happens we really benefit from it we really get better uh, we really uh, express something that is attractive it's attractive in the world and of course um, yeah, there, there will be people that will hate that but there will be a lot of people that will love that and will you know lean toward that So thank you.
Anything else you want to add? Hi, I. <laughs> Okay. Um, this is a really interesting. Um, I. <laughs> it's difficult. Um, not to get emotional because this program has been really challenging just even what are my values? And that's um, a question that's come up before in my life. And I, I think to myself, whoa, I don't even know what that would mean in my life. But with the whole practice of transparency and yesterday you said, well, get ready to fail a lot when you start being transparent, it's like insane. I'm like, God, is it ever gonna get better? And then it's like every day, okay, let's try again, forgive yourself. And it's, it's to the point where I have to, it has to be so like minuscule, you know, like hard choices, easy life, I was thinking about about it and what that means for me and how I can show up for myself um, with that virtue. And it really is just, when I say I'm gonna show up, show up. Like, okay, I showed up, you know, like <laughs> celebrate that because I don't know, sorry, this is really, it's okay. Well, so, that's what's supposed to happen, right? So, um, you know, you, you need to embrace no expectation idea. It means that, you know, it's really not important to think uh, how it was. It, it, it is important to look at it how it is. And day by day, like you said, make it a little bit better. And that's it, you know, forget about what is it going really and how it was, just focus on that present moment. And that present moment will create a different present moment. And when you go into the present moment, when you add a little bit in that day, uh, you choose to, you know, to override the impulse that is wrong it makes you, you know, worse, that you contribute to the overall, you know, goodness of yours over time. And that is extremely important. That's where microprogression system is. And that's where, you know, every day and every minute and every hour counts. That's why the whole idea of people have 10,000 hours or whatever, right? You know, but when it comes to skill of living, we don't have it at all. We don't have any program how to live life, better life. There's no such thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to look into that and approach that from the perspective, from my perspective, uh, how I went through life. And, and I, I, I face a lot of hard choices in my life and easy choices as well. So it's not like um, there were <laughs> um, hard choices on there, a lot of hard choices, and I stood the ground. I, uh, I didn't sell my soul in my life. And uh, no matter how hard a hardship uh, was in front of me, uh, I, I would never compromise integrity. You know, like that woman, right, in the Groundhog Day. What a beautiful, what a beautiful character. Wow. And that character, so strong at the same time, so powerful and so strong, I would not compromise at all, right? And that, that we need those characters. We need these people, you know, we, 
uh, we need to see those characters in life because it just simply helps us. Like Amy said, you know, looking at herself, uh, help her, right? And it it should help really. You should. You probably have a lot of goodness in you, and that you need to see it. Really, you know, you you need to see your kindness that you care, and because that's your core values, and you have it, right? It's just a you know, balance that uh, and it needs to happen and work needs to happen on different levels. And we have a lot of different levels that we'll be talking. We have levels of feeling, we have levels of uh, spirituality, philosophy, physical level, a lot of levels. And sometimes we are really good at one level, but not really great in, in the other one and kind of get lost a little bit with our way of thinking, uh, we get disappointed and we actually act to be disappointed because, uh, you know, in this situation, you know, is okay. What, if that happens, it happens. We just need to get rid of it, our, um, our judgment on that and embrace the day, the day as it is, because it's a beautiful day, no matter what you, you are there with yourself. And you, if you look at that, your day with the, from perspective of, of re really looking as it is, and you have the chance to make it better, to develop different perspectives. But if you exaggerate, you will never be able to make it. So you have to see yourself as you are. That's the only chance that you have. So the only way to see it, if you give up on, you know, uh, on the ideas of uh, exaggerating uh, of the future or covering up of your past, right? Hey, Jersey, can yes. I add to what you said? When I wrote down the transparency of everything I did yesterday, I was feeling exactly like Eva Busta moved. And I was thinking of what, like, how much work I had ahead of me to do and how, you know, I was judging it. I should be so much further along. And when I wrote down everything, I color coded the things that were good and virtuous and helpful. And then I color coded these things that weren't good. And I realized I wasn't as bad as I thought. There were just as many good things I did in the day as things that weren't good for me. And so I'm just going to try little by little to make it all a pink color instead of pink and green. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Well, you know, it's a micro progression system, right? However, you know, your colors you put on and, and, you know, however the progress you create, it cannot be really viewed from the perspective of days or weeks. It can only be views from perspective of years. So, uh, so just relax, right? And take the journey, take the journey of becoming a, a better person and just keep working on it and keep working on it and, and never forget about keep working on it. That's, uh, uh, that's the whole thing. It's like, you know, on the happy body, you, you keep practicing and practicing and in a year you're a little bit more flexible and the next year passes and then you you feel a little bit uh, stronger and then third and fifth year passed and then you just really feel really good in the uh, movements and you start liking the the breathing and the calming down yourself and 10 years pass and then you even feel better about right yourself and then you have the system you're more proud of yourself uh, what you are doing so it's a it's a micro progressive system uh, that works here and if it's missed uh, then you know you can get really bored very fast and reject the whole idea or you push too fast and you know it will be too hard so there are many ways uh, why we you know, uh, uh, we stop doing the things that really uh, could, you know, improve us, could make us better. Like, you know, virtues, right? It's a very simple thing, right? And 
And it's so hard. Why is virtue so hard, right? But, you know, there are certain things that are really hard for us to control, like food. And, you know, uh, the virtue of, of eating enough is a really virtue that is in Tao and in, in Buddhism and in, in Catholicism and, you know, everywhere, wherever you reach, gluttony is not a good thing. But at the same time, we have fat priests, right, obese, and then we have uh, obese monks and so on. So how this can happen, how these people can fail, you know, here so, so badly, how they lose the self-control in just, you know, simply the food. So we have Socrates, you know, said, eat to live. Wow, eat to live. 2,500 years ago, he saw already how food is really hard on us, how difficult for us to control ourselves, and how that, you know, turns into live to eat. We turn ourselves into machines, you know, consume, consuming things, and, and we become these consumers, and, and you know what the cons consuming is, is, is the word is coming from destroying. That's the consuming. That's consuming, like fire consumes, right? So the word is really to destroy, consume. So, um, you know, from the spiritual point of view, how it happened, this, all these priests and all these, uh, you know, uh, monks, I'm missing the point of uh, enough, of waste. That actually when we, you know, do too much, we simply waste, we contribute to the, to the uh, wearing out of our planet. How does people miss that? And that's, you know, if those people miss that, you know, it is the message how hard this is on all of us, you know, to find the virtues, to be virtuous person. Because we are not really getting a lot from a lot of people, these messages. So that's why it's so hard on us. It's just not many people, you know, uh, are that way. Graceful, I would say. And that's what my movie, next movie will be. <laughs> so um, next movie, oh, well, first I will, <laughs> I will talk about the movie. Let's go into the shattered glass, right? And shattered glass, wow, what a movie, right? Here we have, here we have entertainer, right? Here we have the, somebody that should have transparency, somebody that should have, uh, all the integrity of a journalist and write facts. But easy choices for that one are really presented. And uh, he finds himself in the position of, uh, of amusing others. He's an amuser. And then he finds that when he amuses others, they are just happy and lucky. And he, he can get away with all the lying and cheating and so on, right? And goes on, it goes on, like like anything that is either wrong and anything that is uh, is wearing us down, it contributes to eventually crash, and that one crashes at the end. At the end, is seen that uh, how he, you know was prone to the easy choices, how easy choices created hard life for him. It's very clear uh, cut in the movie. So, um, you know, it's, a, it's another integrity situation. You have another journalist, Jack, that, you know, stands by the facts and stands by what he's supposed to be. The core value of that journalist is very clear. Chat, right? So, you know, we have the, the situation here on the, um, that one person chooses hard choices and 
and after 10, 20 years, becomes this high quality and the check eventually ends up to write, I think, for Times or some, you know, uh, magazine that is uh, uh, Integrity Magazine. Integrity, again, comes in, right? So um, here is uh, uh, the happy body, right? How would you really uh, create easy choices in the happy body, right? Well, it's also is very easy to do, right? You eliminate time, uh, you exercise sometimes, and you just compromise integrity of that thing that uh, uh, you cannot really match if you, if you compromise it. So anyone wants to say something about that? I, I, I think you watch the movie and, and uh, anyone who has uh, anything to say? I mean, you're really prolific. <laughs> I know you, you one, one thing you have to really look into that, that, you know, a lot of people like to watch and it's okay that you talk so much. Uh, and, you know, um, it, it's, it's okay. It's, uh, you don't have to really <laughs> think about yourself that you're the only one. Other people will come. Yeah, in fact, Simon just wanted to say something. Yes, I was almost there, Amy. Firstly, thank you. I, I love the way that you break the ice, so thank you very much. Um, and yes, uh, you, your contribution and also Karen's and Eva Buster move is, is invaluable. So thank you very much. Um, I certainly appreciate it in the group. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't see the movie. Um, it's unavailable in my country, uh, in Australia, uh, which may be because we're too far away or something like that. However, I did read the, um, uh, the synopsis of it and, um, it certainly was a, you know, a guy making easy choices and ending up with a difficult life. Uh, and Jersey, just what you were saying back then, I found really interesting. Uh, and it, 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 it is interesting. It's often a roadblock when I introduce people to the happy body, uh, which, you know, I'm sold on. I've been doing for a couple of years. And I, I'd say I, you've just got to do a series of exercises every day. And their first thing is every day? <laughs> right. <laughs> Amazing, right? It's like people don't live every day. <laughs> that, that's right. I think people want a um, are looking for a part time, a part time uh, system of living or something. You know, I mean, you see, church is easy. You only have to go once a day, once a week. Right. Happy body. You have to do it every day, Jersey. Not good, inconvenient. <laughs> <laughs> inconvenient. <laughs> That's funny. Indeed. So I don't, I don't really have any insights into the movie because I didn't get to see it. Did see Groundhog Day, which you know uh, was exactly as you expressed it. So, but I'd love to hear what someone else says about the actual movie, the story. Um, I can certainly see why you applied that. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Amy, you wanted to say something, right? Well, I'm working out at the same time that I listen to you because that's what it used to be like when I hired you as my trainer. <laughs> uh, you would talk just like this while I was working out and it absorbed. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> yeah, it's freaking awesome. Um, I, I, I have nothing to add to the movie thing. I thought you captured the whole... Thing perfectly because I was like why does Jersey want us to watch this movie and you explained it so I'll I missed it you missed the movie I missed the ex explanation because I thought the movie sucked oh, really? <laughs> well I thought that the character was disgusting you know the fact you know I just and so that made me feel like I don't like the movie because he was such a bad guy well, it was right. That's, a, that's the point that uh, it showed the person. It showed the person that compromised integrity of a journalist. 
and also show the person that reverse really because at the beginning that boy maybe was a good boy right yeah. and this reverse action what happened in groundhog day is a reverse yeah. here it is the good to the bad and all with, right. uh, you know so all right here you have the situation right. with the um with the um entertainment and facts right but integrity is still in the in the core of the movie I guess what I hate is a lack of integrity. And it made me, you know, I hate that. Well, you uh, know, uh, it made you feel wrong. some way, right? And, and it's supposed to feel you that way because the feeling is important that we have strong sickness when something is wrong, right? right. And if we don't get that sickness, we are okay with something bad happen over and over and over right yes but That's we're not yeah i'm agreeing with you but i'm never okay with something bad happening over and over and i guess i'm i i i'm happy about that <laughs> but yeah. it can be frustrating too you know I and mean, I, we could talk about a lot of things that happen over and over but um it's janice and um i won't waste your time right now because your words are more valuable than mine no, no, no. We are all valuable here. <laughs> well, but it takes me to the uh, another uh, movie that we are going to watch. And uh, you see, we are we are going from integrity uh, from the first movie, uh, creating integrity. In the second, losing integrity. But it's the second also we are getting into this, uh, you know ill feeling about the character that becomes so uh, that way, right? Uh, but it's also very, um, you know, character that we need compassion to, that, you know, that, that boy really uh, loses completely and is unable to uh, restore himself to the virtuous meantime, right? So um, it happens that the whole environment loses that boy too. So the whole environment is not really picking up that he uh he was lying right they they just everything they would say how we could miss that yeah. right that 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 boy goes through the movie with just so much entertainment and fun and so on right um and that that happens and that if that happens it means that um that really we need really better skills to recognize what happens. Uh, what is the language of a uh, micro progressive language to from the good to losing the integrity or reverse, right? So I, I will talk to the uh, about the book, the mastering, uh, you know, uh, rest choices, you know, rest is really good and how to, uh, we juxtapose the master and fatalist in life and how to recognize the voice of the fatalist and how to recognize the the voice of a master so uh, i will introduce that book so i will introduce this thing slowly things but the most important is that uh, we engage in the conversation we engage in the talk and we engage in the meaningful and very strong impactful uh, moments and, and, and arts that make us, make us uneasy. That, that, that's what the movie made you. That's supposed to be that way. We are supposed to really, um, you know, learn that feeling from watching that. But it could be that for many people, they don't see it, you know, that way at all, right? So um, the movie attempts, you know, to open that feeling. Thank you. You're okay. So we go to the next feeling that I want you to um, to be exposed to in the next movie. Uh, it will be Amazing Grace. Oh my God! I was watching it last night. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it, it, is there anything more about that movie, like who is in it? Oh, sorry. Uh, Amy, who is in it? I don't know the actors. Oh, wait. 
I'm sorry. There's another movie called Amazing Grace, which is a documentary about Aretha Franklin, which I highly recommend. Uh, that's that Amazing Grace about the movie about England and uh, getting rid of the slavery and, and a, a lawyer that pursued that journey and lost his, you know, almost anybody on that road. So um, that is the movie that I want you to watch. Bummer. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a beautiful movie. <laughs> but I want you to get that movie because I want you to expose to one moment in that movie and um, a very meaningful thing that uh, happens there. You know, that it, we have, you know, a highly integri integrity human being there in the movie uh, fighting what is for what is right. So it's a different movie, right? So now you have this virtuous person fighting like a superhuman with the whole system to change it while everyone else, you know, is okay with it. And, you know, uh, slavery, we have slavery, right? Is it, this is the time in England where slavery is uh, uh, highly acceptable and convenient right? It's convenient. As like we said, goodness is inconvenient. So uh, the homework, a shattered glass, you know, um, I, 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 I want you to uh, really think about news and facts, you know, or about coronavirus and you know, look into the messages, the news, where are the news and where are the facts? So, um, so when you uh, look, you know, uh, look when people talk about it, that would be entertainment or it really delivers certain news, certain facts about that that are really meaningful or they are just repeating after others and they are creating talk about it. So news are only when the news happens and not the news to something is repeated for the sake of talking between people. So when you uh, expose yourself to news, you will expose yourself to, uh, to the facts and transparency and the whole system will not wear you up entertaining system that will create judgment, will create the, the blames, will create uh, uh, whining and complaining and on and on and on, exaggeration and anxiety. All of it can go away if you stay with the facts. You have the chance to, uh, to save yourself from all the time that you had spent and now, you know, get into your own room and use the time for you know creating uh, in that room better you you have you have the breathing patterns of the happy body i ask you about the uh, the breathing right now you probably did you're getting better with it calming yourself down now uh, ask you about the time so use now the the third element, you know, about the about the the kind of food that you are eating. You just you know look through the day and write down whether it's a good food or bad food. It's like you know you go into virtues of your of your own self, and you go there to recharge yourself. But you can also go to recharge yourself that you eat good food. Or do you exercise every day? That's how we recharge our energy. Jersey, can I can I ask you a question uh, right. on the on the um, on the news portion? Because I, I uh, it's I've stopped watching the TV news. I've stopped watching uh, a lot of things. I I get my two newspapers a day, and I I read those to try and stay up. But to your point, 
um, so much of the news is not that's on TV is not reporting the news. It is um, expressing opinions about possibly what might be happening or what might not be happening. And uh, unfortunately, even on the sports side of things, I used to love to uh, watch uh, ESPN Sports Center and all of that other kind of stuff. And um, until it dawned on me that uh, uh, ninety-eight percent of what was being talked about was not news. It was potentially things that might happen, who might win the game, why they might win it, et cetera, et cetera, all of which um, can be a lot of fun and, and, uh, and do things, but uh, it's, it's, it's also highly distracting. And I, I'm just curious as to as how do you try to filter some of that out of your, out of your own life? Well, I, uh, I get news from people. I don't watch news. The last time I watched news was maybe 73, 74. So that was the last time that I watched news. I don't watch news. People give me news. <laughs> you know, people brought me coronavirus, you know, talk to me about this. So I really don't need, you don't need to watch because it's so uh, little news out there in the world, right? The next news is when we have a uh, therapy drug, right? And what kind is that? And then when we come out of the, you know, uh, the quarantine, right? And return to business, right? These are the only news. And it will happen in the next uh, three, four months. These are important facts for us. And then everything else is really not important and not necessary. You're right, 95%. Uh, what I would do with 95% of that um of the time right i focus on you know on the work i focus on my writing i focus on the things that i uh they have the power to create better me over time so you have uh, certain things like i said certain books and certain movies they don't have that power at all but there is a, a like entertainment doesn't have a power to make you better over time it means that it really doesn't matter how many hours you watch it. It really doesn't matter for how many years you watch it. It's not going to do anything good for you over time, nothing. That's what is called entertainment. But when you uh, look into facts, then they can do something. Or the works that they are very, um, challenging the works that like books and, and arts that you know like uh, you can return over and over and over like to groundhog day that movie i can watch over and over and over and you know, so there's a huge message in the, the movie right amazing grace too there are certain movies but most movies don't have it at all most movies you don't you wouldn't like to even watch second time so focus uh, on those things and the books or movies are also people. I have books that I, I keep reading from, for 30, 40 years, the same book. And I'm rereading that book. I'm rereading that. Why I'm rereading that book over and over? Because it's still making me, you know, different perspectives. So Zen saying is uh, for that. Before enlightenment, you chop wood and carry water. After enlightenment, you chop wood and carry water. So, okay, so what happens here? What happens is, you know, when you change, you have different perspective, but you do the same thing. That thing that creates a challenge for us, that uh, changes our perspective about the things, gives us different insights, like uh, reading the same poem for thousands of times can create that. But not every poem, some poems you, you, you cannot even read second time, but some of them you can read thousands of times. So you see there are certain people are like that too. To be around them, they create constant growth, constant inspiration, constant uh, motivation and, and drive towards something that you will 
you know, do. You get insight around them. You go home and you have insights what to do. You have insights how you want to write something or do something, change something, say something. It's amazing. So you can lose all of it, that pursuit, because of entertainment that is completely useless. It is sometimes maybe, you know, have fun a little bit, but doesn't contribute to anything to us. That's why, you know, we should work and then have a little bit entertainment and we should know it's entertainment and very select that entertainment to maybe 30 minutes a day, right? Okay, I will have some fun, you know, I want to see how they talk about something there and that's it, but very select. Because he's just a little Thank bit Thank you. Better, right? Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So uh, you wrote from, uh, from Virtues, I understand. Anybody wants to uh, read a sentence? About the hard choices in your life and, and uh, first day, I understand and finish that sentence. Um, no? Jersey? Yes. Um, so maybe not reading this, but just from hearing Charles now and your, your argumentation writing, because the home office somehow got me really sucked into this news entertainment and stories about Corona. And writing down the virtues yesterday, um, I, I really promise myself I'll not give a second anymore to any weird news on Corona or anything in the next weeks that I now have to, well, time to work on myself. And it, it worked. Suddenly this need to, I have to look at it. I have to check New York Times. I have to check whatever journal you want. It, it went away just by writing down the virtue. So thank you very much for that. Right. You're welcome. Well, that's great. Thank you. Well, you know, the, um, it's funny how, uh, how you put that, that, that news really and seeing it and, and, and deciding not to. It's a, it's a kind of a building up process in us, right? But the one thing is about that, that don't look at that as news. Look at that entertainment and fact. Because real news is facts, right? So news is a good thing, right? But it's supposed to be facts. On the facts, there is a lot of huge entertainment of 95% or 99% of the time that is just about this news. Real news is facts. That's what's about. That, you know, some stations you know, 20, 30 years ago were about news. And I will not say the name because they would be suing me or something, destroying me. But these stations turned themselves in 90s into entertainment. Started competing with entertainment and became entertainment. And we lost the news. It was the news in 80s. A lot of news. Now we have a lot of entertainment. It's kind of a, like stations became like a, um, um, like host of the show, right? They just talk about it. So don't get attracted to that. But news is a good thing. Look for uh, for facts, and uh, but meaningful facts. They're important for you. This is the news. Everything else doesn't have any power of news at all. And it's, it's uh, not useful for us. So there is no reason even to watch that. Why, right, right? So it, it, if, if that doesn't change over time, that make you better over time, it's just, just taking your time. And the time, like Seneca, you know, said in the first really letter, right? Time is all we got time we got for free we were giving time to be here and 
that time, we should do everything, not to waste. All right, you get you get your um, homework. Anyone wants to uh, say something? Thank you, thank you. Before we close. All right, thank you, thank you all for today, and see you tomorrow. Awesome, fantastic, thank you. Bye, Jersey, love you. Love you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Stay safe, everybody. Wear your masks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. You can watch the, the Facebook on Jersey Gregory because there are two horses, iron horses in Woodside with masks, and I made a picture. It's so, it's, a, it's like, a, it's such a cute, you know, thing to do. It's a very playful. <laughs> Wait, what are, are we writing about the virtues? Are we journaling or? Yes, yeah, we said it, we are uh, writing about the hard choices in life from the perspective, I think. And we are watching the movie and we are also uh, looking at news and trying to recognize what are the where are the facts and where is about news? Okay. So whatever you watch, you look and, uh, and ask yourself a question. Is it news or is it talk about uh, something? What was news before? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. I even must to move. <laughs> right. I think it's Bustamante, but ask her. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I think it's Bustamante. It's a common Spanish name, last name. Oh, I see. I think. <laughs>